convergence of the three rivers on Art Rooney Drive. We welcome you to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And this was the scene just a few moments ago as the Pittsburgh faithful were fired up by the hometown Steelers taking the field. They're all set as they'll match up. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line with the Baltimore Ravens. They go play action here on first down. Open receiver, that's Hayden Hurst, the tight end. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. On the ground with their leading rusher from a season ago. It's Alex Collins. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. Well, no slow start here. A couple nice chunk plays back to back. I love the momentum that they're showing here early because they did it both ways, right? Threw the ball on first down for a nice chunk of yardage. Came right back and ran the ball. Looks like they've got the defense set back on their heels. Let's see if they can keep this moving. Now a play fake here on first down. Looking deep for Crabtree. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. But that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Setting up to throw, Flacco. It's caught on the right side, Williams. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. He didn't even try to signal for a timeout, so they must have not been aware of the numbers. I think he lost track of the time left in the play clock and probably was trying to read the defense and trying to figure out which play to run and just lost track, and it cost him. Delay of game penalty. Ships him back five yards, makes it third and ten. Flacco from midfield. He's going to look deep for Perriman. And Owen will be intercepted. Sean Davis with a pick. Well, when someone other than the quarterback is throwing the football, it's either beautiful or a disaster, and here it was the latter. Nowhere in between, right? I mean, you're exactly right. It takes a fortitude to call that type of a play, but when it doesn't work, oh, boy, you wish you hadn't. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. And that was a good run. This is only one of nine guys to go over 1,000 yards in 2017, and I think you can't let him run wild here. What do you think, 100 yards, the measuring stick? Always. That is the threshold. You want to keep him under that if you want to play good defense. On second down, it's Bell, and they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Only a gain of a yard, but that's all they needed is that's going to move the chains. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Here we go. Ready? Blue 30. Now a first down carry by Bell. So he got three of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. A gain of three, second down. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half, 
maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Now they'll throw it with Roethlisberger. This is caught by Antonio Brown. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Roethlisberger hooking up with Brown to get the Steelers a first. And there's our first glimpse of Antonio Brown in this game, and he's a guy that's a threat each and every time the ball heads in his direction. Coming off the second year where he led the league in receiving yards in 2017. Yeah, 1,533, just turned 30 back in July, and no signs of this man stopping. On the counter, here's Bell. And he's going to take this one down inside the 45. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. But well, Charles, Le'Veon Bell, 26 going on 27, and the shelf life of these NFL running backs seems to be getting shorter and shorter. How long can he go at this torrid pace? Usually we say 30 is kind of the line of demarcation for a running back, but Le'Veon Bell played all 16 games in 2017, takes great care of himself off the field. I think he's got a chance to break through that 30-year-old mark and in a big way. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll make it third and one. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time, because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. Bad time to get a delay of game penalty there. Not that there's a good time, but that makes it third and six. From midfield now, here's Roethlisberger. Man open left side is Brown. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game, but it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go and make the tackle right away. On fourth down, here comes the Steeler punter Jordan Berry to kick it away. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. That opening drive ended with the INT. It didn't lead to points, but still not the way they were hoping to begin the game. But how about going and telling your defense, thank you, a huge thank you. You said it didn't lead to points, stalled off that drive. Now they've got a chance to redeem themselves and maybe reward their defense a little bit by putting some points on the board on this one. They'll begin the drive with Collins. And he'll take this one up to about the 23. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Flacco fakes the give, sets the throw. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going down. Javon Hargrave breaking throw to get him for a loss of seven. This Pittsburgh defense always keeping the offensive line on their toes, or I guess on their heels and back. They are certainly about pressure, aren't they? At 56 sacks as a unit in 2017, which led the NFL, they certainly live up to their nickname, which is Blitzburg. Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. And incomplete, the contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed, if there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. But for Pittsburgh, as they come back out here, it's not going to get much easier. They had the week one tie against Cleveland. Kansas City next week. 
and then they have Tampa Bay, but then Baltimore and Atlanta the following weeks. Listen, if you're a defensive back, a secondary player, you better get your rest this week because Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek Hill, they're going to test you downfield. And that game with Tampa Bay looked like a gimme. It's no longer a gimme after what Tampa did against New Orleans. And then, who's that in the fourth game? The Ravens. The Ravens. <laughs> Renewing that rivalry once again. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight. So far, it's working. I like what we're seeing from the offensive line. They seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and reestablishing the line of scrimmage, moving that defensive front backwards. But also like what the runner's giving us, too. It appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. All right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Juju Smith-Schuster, the intended receiver. And it's third down. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground, incomplete. Here we go. An incomplete pass on second down. It muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. But that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. Here's Jordan Berry now as he'll kick it away for the second time. The Ravens offense now, they get set to head back on the field. And the results for them have not been strong to this point. Two drives have ended in a turnover and then a punt. So would it be too snarky for me to say that they've shown improvement? Because you had two, <laughs> two drives with turnovers. Now they punted it away, so at least they didn't turn it over. That's good, right? You're going to get some angry users <laughs> reaching out to you on social media. Well, I don't mean to be. I was actually looking for the positive. Silver lining, you know. First and ten here for Flacco. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And <laughs> what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Here's Flacco. It's brought in complete. It's John Brown. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. A very solid gain of 27. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Here's Collins. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. It's big Vince Williams who made the tackle. Well, obviously, they would have at least liked to have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Instead, now, they're dealing with second and long. I thought they would have passed it after the penalty. Probably wish they would have now. A first carry now for Kenneth Dixon. And he picks up about six as he gets this down to the 41. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing, 
often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. From the gun, Flacco drops it underneath to Dixon. The Raven passing game getting in sync. Another first down. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. All right, Brad, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs... They're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. Second quarter now. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis with you. It's the Ravens who have the football. They've got it second and four to start things out. Passing play, Flacco. It's caught left side by John Brown. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. It's a loss of two, now third down. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way, lost yardage. No, for some reason it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you <laughs> move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. That's a good job there, creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now, since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. So on fourth down, here's the Ravens Pro Bowl kicker, Justin Tucker, out onto the field. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. And Tucker's kick right there, it's good. And the Ravens strike first at three zip. So still no touchdowns in the first half, but we do have some action on the scoreboard with the field goal. So maybe now the mentality changes in this game because anytime you can get to the red zone and if you don't come away with six points, you feel like it's a disappointment. In a game like this one, being able to kick field goals means you're right there and then you're just looking for that big break to take you over the top. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They've had it twice. They punted twice, not the start they were hoping for. Not at all, and let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? They'll start out on the ground with Bell. And he's got Rome. He finds an opening past the 40. And finally taken down at the 30-yard line. It's a big run that time by Bell. 45 yards on the ground. And for those worried about whether or not Le'Veon's explosiveness would return, I think we just had our answer. ACL? What ACL? This guy's back running as if he were totally healthy and never had had an issue. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 30-yard line. And they'll keep it on the ground with Bell. Now Bell hit. He lost the football. And the Ravens have got it. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not going to tip it. I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, Four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there, 
Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And an alley to run. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 12 yards to pick up there. Good for a Raven first. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving him a whole lot of credit and thanking him for that much space to rumble. Here's a first down run with Collins. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. There to stop him, Terrell Edmonds. On that play, it was the defensive front that won the battle. They out-leveraged the offensive line, got into the backfield, and held him to no gain. <laughs> Operating off play action, Flacco. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. But in tapping those toes, he tried to get both inbounds. He could not do it, though. In tap dance parlance, could not complete the shuffle. All right, needed to get that shuffle down with both <laughs> feet, not just one. Is that what they say? There it is. You know, put a little sand down on the stage. I'll take your word for it, man. That's caught inside the 20. And he takes it down deep into Pittsburgh territory. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Barely got that snap off. Flacco now looking for Snead, and it's intercepted. Picked off down at the two. He's at the 50. And he'll get it all the way down inside the 35-yard line. Charles, when plays like that work, it's a thing to behold, but sometimes we see why they're very deep in the playbook. And how many times have we been at practice and heard all the other guys chirping about, you know, I used to play quarterback in high school. I can do this until it becomes a game situation. Not quite the same in many cases. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Roethlisberger with a give to Bell. And there is nowhere for him to cut back as he's taken down in the backfield. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, go, go. you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. On third down, Roethlisberger. And this is going to be incomplete. The safety that time, Tony Jefferson there on the coverage. It's never a bad idea to try and get it to Antonio Brown, but there must be a little bit of the Madden curse going on for our cover athlete here. Hasn't been able to get that elite separation that we're used to seeing from him. So on fourth down, the Steelers call on the number of Chris Boswell for the field goal try. From the right hash, it's a 46-yard attempt. And Boswell's kick is good. And that will tie us at 3-3. They got the interception, but very little movement after, and that forces him to settle for three. And it does feel like settling when that happens, doesn't it? It certainly does, but we've got to give a lot of credit where it's due, and that's to the defense because they ran onto the field. It's what we call sudden change, right? Interception, you've got to go put out the fire, and they did, holding them to a field goal. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. The return man, Chris Moore. The Ravens offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. 
And two picks thrown here in this first half alone. We'll see how that affects him. Can't wait to see where his confidence is because the great ones, they'll throw four or five picks, and while it'll hurt their team, it won't hurt their confidence. They'll think something was just wrong with the ball or the wind <laughs> or something was funny. It's never about them. That's how they stay so into the moment and into the game. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. And, partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Flacco from the gun. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Flacco off play action. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Well, we got a second here to look back to week one. A handful of nice road wins. The biggest surprise, no doubt, CD. How about Tampa Bay winning at New Orleans? Yeah, that was a big one because I'm not sure how many people really expected that. We looked at the schedule in preseason and thought, oh, my God, for Tampa. At New Orleans, at home for Philadelphia, home for Pittsburgh. I figured an 0-3 start. If they won one of them, it would be great. Well, they got it on Sunday, winning at New Orleans. Washington at Arizona, Cincinnati at Indianapolis, Kansas City at the Chargers. All of them had big wins in week one. But didn't you think Chicago was going to pull it oh, out? Oh, that was going to be a stunner. And if Chicago and the Saints had won, some elimination pools wouldn't have had many people left. Yeah, but Aaron Rodgers showed up, and poor Chicago went home with an L. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 38. Now Collins. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second down, Collins spins past another. Oh, my man. And he's going to get this inside the 30. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. to Collins and able to push his way forward here for a good little game five yards on the carry good pickup on first down I call that play a success a nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down a very solid gain on that play They run with Collins. They'll get it inside the red zone, but only for a couple down to the 19. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Flacco to throw here on third down. And he's unable to haul it in. So it falls incomplete over the middle third of the field. And that brings up fourth. Maybe just a lack of concentration there as he couldn't haul it in. And when you're going across the middle like that, you know, he's running that drag route. You are conscious of all the bodies and the traffic in there. But let's face it, if you're going there, you might as well come down with the football and absorb whatever else happens after that. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. 
And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals. It's 6-3. to three. So we're trading first half field goals. No breakthrough on the touchdown front. We got a 6-3 game. Yeah, and I know so many people look at a game through offensive eyes, right? They want to see how the game's played that way. You know how I'm going to view it, right? The defenses, to me, have responded well in this game. Like what I'm seeing from them, both of them hoping to keep it to field goals and not give up big touchdowns. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive down with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Now Roethlisberger going to hand the bell. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Give him three yards on the run there. That still leaves him with a difficult third and eight coming up. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. From the gun on third down, it's Roethlisberger. Goes underneath for Bell. It's a Pittsburgh first down, a gain of 13. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. First and ten, it's Roethlisberger. Trying to lay one up deep. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Wide open receiver complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Pittsburgh getting 16 yards there and also a first down. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. His throw incomplete. He was looking to hit his running back, Le'Veon Bell, that time. And now it's second down. But one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Again, it's Roethlisberger. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Partner, I think it's high time to get him some passes that he's comfortable with. Some easy throws, some completions. He's not even hitting to 50% thus far. Well, certainly that has played a big role into why they are trailing right now. Let's go, let's the try. Steelers on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and ten. Watch, watch run. Set. Black 80. <laughs> ben to throw again. And now another thrown incomplete. The safety that time, Tony Jefferson there on the coverage. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you gotta try and find something. Pressure comes and it's blocked. The Ravens block it. It's picked up and this is a live ball, remember. 
And a blocked punt always can be such a momentum swing. In a big way, because now the spark has been lit. Everyone gets involved with that team. And many times, coaches preach, you block a punt, you block a kick, that usually leads to victory. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past, the biggest teaching point. Get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Operating out of the gun. Flacco. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. Third down, Flacco from the gun. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts it, as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. down Flacco and an incomplete pass that'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback but when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it it helps have the big gun in this case just a little bit too much so after the incompletion on first now second and ten They go pass again with Flacco. Pressure comes, and the Steelers take him down. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. Flacco and the Ravens now after the sack need something good here on third and long. Now Flacco, he's going to let it go deep for the end zone. So they took a shot there on third down, couldn't get it. Now it's four. Well, they bounced up after taking a sack and took a shot downfield. I think a lot of us thought maybe he'd run draw in that situation instead. Tried to get all back in one play. Yeah, third and long, thought he needed the deep pass, couldn't connect it. Maybe he was hoping for a penalty downfield to give him the yardage they needed. And Tucker's kick right there, it's good. And the lead will increase to six now, it's nine to three. So that one is his third of the game. Now, if you're wondering, that's only halfway to his career high as he once had six oh, field oh, goals. Oh, Brandy, but what, six? Let's hope we don't get that again, <laughs> please. Okay, can, can we see a few touchdowns here and there? That'd be nice. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. 
but you got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk is a big decision here. And before this second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now whistles here before the snap, and it looks like one of the Steelers may have moved. The full start hurts him there a bit. Backs him up to second and nine. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Over the middle, hauled in by Smith-Schuster. And prior to this third and two play, we're going to get a timeout call. As they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. The Steelers on third down. Just one for five to this point. Here it's third and two. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. But it's brought in by Washington. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. On the left side, it's McDonald. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Roethlisberger coming up with a first and ten. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Throwing again, it's Roethlisberger. Throw left side, complete to Smith-Schuster. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. To throw again is Roethlisberger. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back complete. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. It's an eight-yard pickup, and that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. The second half starts with a carry by Bell. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line.
Now it's the backup Rudolph. Incomplete, almost intercepted. They haven't picked him off yet. Would have been a great time for the first, but instead it's third down. We've seen these defenses make enough opportunistic plays to keep this one low scoring. Flying around, making plays on the ball, and we see yet another errant throw as a result. And the Steelers on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and seven. Hurry up, here we go. Boom, landed. Ah! Out of the gun, Rudolph. Looking deep downfield, and this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Brandon Carr. And they will set up shop at their own 46-yard line. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. On first down, they go with Dixon. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. So the delay of game penalty moves it back five. That makes it second and ten. This is Collins on the handoff. He'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. The Ravens on third down. They've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and seven. Operating off play action, Flacco. It finds Crabtree for the completion. And he's going to go out of bounds. He takes this one down shy of the 20. First catch of the game for Crabtree. It's a first down. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Crabtree with it over the middle. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Three red zone trips have yielded just two field goals for them to this point, so they'll be searching for something more on second and goal here. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. That gets him three yards closer here as it brings up second and goal. The line of scrimmage, the seven now on second and goal. Here's Flacco. This will be caught at about the five. And he is into the end zone for a Baltimore touchdown. Michael Crabtree, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Ravens will extend their lead. A good, sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, 
very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with, with great dispatch. And that is out of the back of the end zone incomplete. Protection was great. He had time to set up a campsite. But in the secondary, though, they were ready. And I think that in most places on the field, if you have that much time to throw the ball, someone's going to shake free and you'll find an open receiver. But condensed near the goal line on a two-point conversion, all that exit, you know, there's not any extra field. So it kind of closes in on them, and that allows you to cover a little bit better. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And the Steelers set to take the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be second and 11. Well, if these guys are going to chop into that deficit, they're going to have to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage will be found. On second down, here's Rudolph. And his throw is incomplete. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now it's Rudolph. Throw left side complete. That's McDonald. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the Ravens, they'll take over. And now here come the Ravens. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10. Passing play, Flacco. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he's brought down. A big one there for the Ravens. It goes for 18. Now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. They look to throw on first and 10 with Flacco. He's got his man, it's Andrews. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Now they, they completed a couple on this drive, but they peeled off some pretty good chunks of yardage, too. Absolutely. Great start. Two nice plays in the pass game. Now can they continue to feed off that? Flacco now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he'll get this one down to about the ten-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down third quarter and you've got the lead you're not ready to go into that four minute offense to close the game out but a running game can really benefit your team right now on second down Flacco to throw and it's caught and he's able to get it down to the two yard line 
And they call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. Trying to punch it in with Collins. And he will take it in for a Ravens touchdown. Alex Collins taking it in from two yards out. And the Ravens will add on to their lead. Justin Tucker for the extra point. Tucker able to connect on the extra point. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even Let's put go. points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. Well, you had to punt on your first drive, and on the first play of the second drive, you end up going backwards. I would dare say they need something good to happen right here, right now. Here's Rudolph now on second down. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long. And they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. Third and long, it's Rudolph. He's going to walk one deep left side here. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Brandon Carr on the coverage there. Well, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Jordan Berry now. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. Fielded at about the 28. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Ravens offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. First and 10, and Flacco looking to throw. And they'll take over inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. But they needed a break. They needed to make a play here in the third quarter. Defensively, they did that. Now they got to go quickly and get some points on the board. And the best part is that they made their own break. Taking the ball away. Now they just look at their offense and say, guys, let's go. Come on, capitalize on this one. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. A Steeler first down on the pickup of 11 yards. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Here comes a first down throw from Rudolph. Man open left side is Brown. A gain of 10, good for a Steeler first down. 
And there's a man they call A.B., always a volume receiver. He gobbles up catches. Holds a number two and number four spots for most receptions in a season in NFL history. And in 2015, just seven catches shy of setting the single season mark for most receptions, currently held by Marvin Harrison, a Hall of Famer. And he had 136 catches that year on the heels of 129 the season before. Set him back five. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game. First and 15. God, here's Rudolph. That is caught at the seven. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10 to the seven. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Brandon, sometimes we give a lot of these running backs credit for being good receivers, and all they catch are swings and screens. Le'Veon Bell's a full member of the passing game for the Pittsburgh Steelers, whether he split out of the backfield or not. Well, no doubt he can catch it coming off a career-high 85 go. receptions in 2017. Now Bell, and he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a yard on the pickup there, second and goal. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. Rudolph looking to throw it. And they're going to get to him. A sack. Sack back at the nine-yard line. I think you saw the same thing that I did there, partner. Remember, he's their backup quarterback, so the last thing they need is to lose another one right here on the sack. Looks like he's going to be okay, though. Yeah, he looked like he was favoring something in the left leg. Appears to be fine now, but you're right. That O-line, they got to protect him. Hurry up, here we go. Ah! Here's Bell. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Another stop on third down, and this defense still hasn't allowed a touchdown to this point. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. This is an easy one, 23-yarder. And Boswell's kick is good. And that'll get the deficit back to 16. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. Moore now on the return. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because... What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team. That their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They get 14 on that one. That's good for a Baltimore first down. He's having a big game through the air, and sometimes those smart decisions just dump it off. That's how you continue to have big games through the air. I agree totally. That's, that's a great analogy, a great way to put it, because he doesn't get too greedy where everything has to be pushed downfield, trying to create big plays that aren't there. You dump it off and take that nice game, and things add up, and now you have the kind of game he's having. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Brandon, this is clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. 
they're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. Second down, Flacco now. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. The Ravens on third down. Not quite 50%. Four for nine. This is third and 11. From the gun, Flacco drops it underneath to Dixon. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. A gain of four on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. You like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. What you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three points. The kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Super tough. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. A very solid gain of 27. Fourth quarter, every drive so critical, and you figure may only get one more shot after this, so a touchdown's imperative on this drive. It is, but you also have to think to yourself in play calling, don't hold anything back. Don't save it for the second touchdown. You got the first one for the Let's second go. one to even matter. Three, on first down, it's Rudolph. A screen to Bell. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And that'll make it second and 12. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Brown. The passing game in rhythm right now for Pittsburgh. There's another first down. You cannot write these guys off just yet. Not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. So in Raven territory now. Here's a first and 10 at the 41. Ben to throw again. And incomplete. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Again, it's Roethlisberger. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Vance McDonald, the tight end, was the target, and it's third down. I'm not even sure I know who this guy is out there playing right now. This is very unlike him, one of the most accurate guys in the league, totally off his game right now. I don't know. I was going to ask you what you pin it on, but defensively, they've been pretty solid. Well, sometimes, you know, those defenders, they get into the receivers pretty well, and if they chip away at their timing, it's going to affect what you're doing throwing the ball as well. Open man, Smith-Schuster, it's complete. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. The passing game in rhythm right now for Pittsburgh. There's another first down. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. 
That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Throwing again, it's Roethlisberger. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. It'll be a loss of a yard, and just like that, it's third down. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. Roethlisberger now to throw on third down. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. Okay, so thought they might go for it here down late. Instead, they trot out the field goal unit. And Boswell's kick is good. And that will cut the lead down to 13. So he remains perfect, three for three, in the field goal department. And it's so important for any offense to have an ace like him up their sleeve, isn't it? Because now you know what his range is, and as soon as your offense gets there, you're pretty much counting on three points going up on the board. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10 at their own 24. The drive starts with a run by Collins. And he's able to get this one up to the 45-yard line. That burst good for 20 and a first down. Uh, he's still rumbling, isn't he? Still looking fresh in this one despite the heavy workload. But you and I both know, well-conditioned, and he did tell us that he thrives on being at his peak late in ball games. They go play action here on first down. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Give him eight on the play, and it'll make it second down. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but, but this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. And the play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. That's going to set him back five yards. So the delay of game penalty backs him up. It's now second and seven. Now they'll run on the draw. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. He lost two there, and it's third down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And that is incomplete. T.J. Watt, first-round pick a year ago there defensively for Pittsburgh. 
linebacker. Let's go ahead and try and get into the body and the mind of the linebackers. Yeah, I know they're bigger and stronger than I ever was, but in this situation, they understood what was going on as much as the offensive guys. Because the offense guys are always taught, find the first down sticks and make the play. On defense, what do you want to do? Guard the first down line. Make sure they don't get there and tackle them in front. They were able to drop in their zone coverage figure out where the first down line was, and end up making the play, swatting it away so they couldn't get the completion. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 23. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Throw left side, complete to Smith-Schuster. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Washington with a catch, middle of the field. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Third and two, now Roethlisberger. Got his man complete over the middle. It's James. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Roethlisberger to his big target, James. All six, seven of him for a Steeler first down. Take this one up close to about the 45. The linebacker, C.J. Mosley, in on the stop. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. On second down, Roethlisberger. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Now Roethlisberger. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. Here we go, it's Roethlisberger on fourth down. And he finds McDonald. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. But correct me if I'm wrong, you know, you're down two scores. I don't think you need to rush just yet, but you can't take your time either. Yeah, even if you don't want to commit to full two-minute offense, you have to up the tempo, up the urgency. Maybe you're starting to call two plays in a huddle each time you snap the ball. Now Roethlisberger on first down. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. You never want to give up a sack. From the O-line's perspective, they hate it for several reasons, especially because they felt like they let little brother down back there in the pocket. Oh, no doubt. They have a ton of pride, and they go into every job wanting to keep that guy clean. They want that uniform with no grass stains, no dirt, nothing on it. But it's really, really difficult. You're talking about some terrific athletes who are trying to put him on the ground. They'll run it now out of the gun. They'll get only a couple down to the 44. 
Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback, makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Now Ben on third and long. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. Oh, what a juke into space. And this time not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 14, but they're still a little bit short as it brings up fourth. Indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. Roethlisberger goes underneath for Bell. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. The passing game in rhythm right now for Pittsburgh. There's another first down. Clock running here under 90 seconds to go. Now whistles here before the snap, but it looks like one of the Steelers may have moved. That false start knocks him back behind the 10 now as they'll try again, first and goal. To throw again is Roethlisberger. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. The great move couldn't free him. Taken down at the 10. Three yards is the gain that time, second and goal. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. And his throw here is incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? Set. Blue 30. Right back, right back. Now Roethlisberger to throw. And almost intercepted. Would have been a huge pick in the end zone, but as it stands, that brings up fourth. What a job by this defense all game long. They've come together and really said, no one's crossing our goal line, and they're definitely not going to start right now. You can just see the dejection. Feel like nothing is working offensively. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And he's in. Touchdown, Steelers. In for the score. And the Steelers are able to make this a close game again. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed. But if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively, though, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right. And if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope. When they had to slog their way downfield, they got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah. Yeah, you know. It doesn't you kinda, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> So with exactly a minute to play, here comes a critical onside kick. And who's got it? I think the Ravens do, yes. And they're going to win this football game. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. 
I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Now the Steelers put a stop to the action with a timeout defensively. As the clock will stop with 55 seconds remaining in the football game. And the Ravens taking the field. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. And again, it's Collins. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. And the Steelers signal for another timeout. As the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in quarter number four. Third down, this is Collins. And he gets it down to the 32. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. As the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And that will make this a nine-point lead. So barring something extraordinary here in the closing stages, that field goal should just about put this one on ice. Yeah, they've got to find two scores. So, you know, we're not going to exactly move it over there yet. It can be done, but boy, it's going to be a little bit of a stretch for them, isn't it? Yeah, they would have to move incredibly quick and have some luck, too. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. On the return, Fitzgerald to Sun. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They might be thinking this is close to a lost cause here. Got to play it out. What do they need to do? Well, they have a thought process in mind already, but they can't get ahead of themselves. They know that they need to score quickly. Yep, two-score game. Onside kick and get the ball back and then score again. But they can't worry about the last two points. <laughs> the only thing that matters is scoring quickly. Then they'll take it from there. Ready? Like 80. Here's Roethlisberger. Now Ben hit, and he lost the football. It's loose. Roethlisberger got to get his guys to the line as quick as he can. And now he stops it with a spike at eight seconds. And unable to connect. It's incomplete. And the clock stopped at eight seconds. Roethlisberger to throw. And he can't hang on to it. Nearly picked. He's known for his hands defensively. 
but instead it just brings up fourth down. He's lucky to be getting that one back. After what they've done with him all day long with all the targets trying to go after him, he's obviously gotten smart, and his pride has kicked in. Made a terrific play. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. One last shot for Roethlisberger. And that will be incomplete as time has run out on this football game. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say good night from Pittsburgh.